As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Let's keep in mind that narcissists don't always play their hand right up front. Now we know that they have a high need to be in control. They are very impressed with themselves. They have an attitude of entitlement. In other words, what are you going to do for me? They can be stubborn. They uh, have this attitude of superiority and they don't really care that much about what you feel, but they don't necessarily let you know right up front. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm coming from. So be prepared. Many times they can come across as friendly and, and helpful and they really want to know you when in fact they're setting you up for who knows what their schemes might be. Now, as I watch individuals and I'm trying to determine what I'm dealing with, there's one characteristic, there's one pattern that tends to step forward in virtually every single one of these cases where a person is trying to present themselves well, but there's something else going on behind the scene. And that one trait is persuasive communication. I want you to think, how many times have you been with that, uh, that person that you now know to be narcissistic? How many times has that person uh, seemed to have the need that says, I, I need you to get you to think a little bit more like me? And it can be uh, something very simple where they're, you're talking about something that you enjoyed or a, a project you're working on. And they might just start saying like, well, why wouldn't you do it this way instead of this way? And seemingly it can be innocuous, but over time you realize they do that a lot or you express an opinion and they can come back and say, oh, let me explain to you why my opinion's better. And they can be very strong and forceful in sharing their perspective. And you feel like you just blew right past where I am, didn't you? Or it might be that you have a change in plans or uh, you want to do something that's not the same as them and they want to bring you back onto their path. No, oh, come on. You don't need to do this. Let's do this over here instead. A little bit of that persuasion here and there is to be expected because there are times when we can be enthusiastic about what we think and feel. But you'll notice that when an individual just keeps coming at you with persuasive communication, there's something bigger going on. And then I'm going to double down on that and say, and especially when you have disagreement or when you have some, uh, some clash of uh, opinions and preferences and they start getting angry and there's a frustration that's involved, that's when they're really going to go into that high persuasive mode. Now, I want you to notice that uh, nobody really enjoys being persuaded uh, into. There, there's a little ditty that I like to use. It, it just simply says, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. When, when narcissists come at you with this persuasion that says, okay, you need to do this, and why can't you think this way, and uh, try this, come on, it'll be okay. It's like you're working way too hard, and uh, in the end, is it really going to create the harmony that you want? And narcissists are not interested in harmony. They're interested in your deference. Now, I want you to notice that when people become persuasive, there are a whole lot of other ingredients beneath the surface that are playing into that form of communication. For example, one of the things that pushes the persuasion is narcissists can have a very strong agenda. It's like, look, I already know how things are supposed to be, and, and they're so impressed with their strong agenda that you need to have that strong agenda too. And then uh, on the tails of that, uh, it, it stands to reason, and they're not particularly interested in what you think or feel uh, because it's like, well, my agenda is so good or my opinions are so right, why would I need to listen to yours? And you'll notice that they don't really tune into you nearly as much as they want you to tune into them. In addition, what they're basically saying when they continue to go back into persuasion is, I want you to cease your inclinations and just be like me. And it, it's very much, and it, it can be done in a friendly way, but it's very much their way of saying, you're not measuring up to me right now. In addition, the more persuasive an individual is, it's their way of saying, I, I really like being right, 
but actually I take it a little bit further and it's like, well, I have to be right. And, uh, and right is defined by what I think. And so they have a real strong need to, uh, to be in that correct mode, which implies that somebody's going to be incorrect and that might, somebody might be you. Or uh, it's, it's also the more persuasive they are. It's their way of implying, well, I'm really impressed by me. And in fact, I need you to be impressed by me too. And then on top of that, it's their way of saying, and plus, I really can't trust you to draw correct uh, opinions or, uh, or to draw correct conclusions. Why don't you just kind of go along with me? And uh, on top of that, it's their way of also implying your independence bothers me. And uh, again, this goes back to their need for control when in fact, I believe that healthy relations start, uh, independence free, uh, 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 healthy relations start with the notion that says each person is free to be who, to be who he or she happens to be. Now, when a person comes toward you with this strongly uh, persuasive form of communication, it reveals uh, various elements that are part of their uh, personality. Uh, for example, it, it reveals that they are operating with a competitive mindset, one up, one down. One person's the winner, one person's the loser. And so uh, it's their way of saying, I've got to have that final word. Also, it, it says that uh, whenever a person is too persuasive, um, there's a lot of critical thinking that they have. And when I say critical thinking, I don't mean critiquing, but criticizing, judgment. Uh, the implication is uh, who you are and what you do and how you manage things mm, doesn't really matter. It uh, doesn't really measure up. In addition, it reveals the fact that they're uncomfortable with nuances or they're uncomfortable with complexities. I, I'm one of these that says, you know, there, there are just so many different ways to look at the world or to approach uh, things that uh, it, it would be foolhardy for me to think that uh, I have the, uh, uh, all the standards here in, inside myself. Instead of, uh, of you know, persuading people to think my way, it's like, well, I've got my thoughts and feelings, but where are you coming from? And narcissists don't think like that. Just stick to my opinion and you're going to do a lot better. Also, in their persuasiveness, you find that it runs parallel to stubbornness. The implication being, I don't want to do anything other than what I say needs to be done. And in the end, you feel insulted by these individuals, particularly when they keep coming at you more and more, uh, because it's like, you, apparently you think that I must be some sort of, you know, idiot that just doesn't know up from down. And ultimately, you can see that the goal that these individuals have is to change you. And uh, it, uh, what they want is they want to change you into a more compliant person. They want to change you into a more deferential person. So you can see that individuals can come across seemingly as friendly and pleasant and all. But the more they go into this persuasive form of communication, you realize Something else is going on here, and that's what I mean when I say it's a covert uh, sign that I watch for. It's not all the way dressed up in the uh, the blustery, overpowering style, but the more it keeps coming at you, it's more the more it implies there's there's an agenda that you have, and it doesn't really smell good, and I don't think it's going to end well for me. Um, this all begs the question. Okay, the persuasive person is trying to gain influence, and I can appreciate that. If you have something that you feel is helpful and good for other individuals to flow with, uh, that's appropriate. But what's the best way to have influence? Well, I've got a few thoughts on that too. Why don't we start with uh, thought number one, and that is, I care. Narcissists don't really care about you, um, but healthy individuals will say, well, if I'm trying to have influence, it's because I love you, I respect you, and I care. And there are times when you will speak your thoughts and opinions, but uh, for a healthy kind of end. Also, a good way to have influence is to, tr is to show I really want to know you, not in a, uh, an intellectual way, some da uh, data gathering so that I can get some points against you, but I want to know you because the more fully uh, conversant we are with, who we, uh, with one another, then we're going to be able to, um, to meet each other's needs in a very clean kind of way, in a healthy mindset. Uh, you can, uh, as you're trying to seek influence, you start with the notion that says, it's not my job to change you. It's not my job to force you into my mold. Uh, let's make room for variety. Let's, uh, in fact, let's take a little bit further. Let's celebrate 
variety. You have thoughts that are different from mine. Let's, let's factor all of that in. Now, you can still have your own personal opinions. You can have your preferences. But in the end, I'm hoping you can see the best way to be influential is to offer acceptance even in the midst of differences. I don't know about you, but when I am in the presence of someone who's truly accepting, accepting and caring, and they're not trying to persuade me over to their side, guess what? I'm far more likely to hear what they have to say. And I'm far more likely to, uh, to think to myself, well, I need to consider where this person's coming from because when it, co it comes from a place of goodness as opposed to a place of manipulation, then we have a core trust that we can build upon. Now, that's a, that's a concept that narcissists don't even think about. Uh, like I say, uh, uh, narcissism is ultimately a self-absorbed, um, uh, controlling style of, uh, of life. And so when you say, well, let's show caring and all, it's like, okay, okay, I'll try to pretend like I am. But in the end, uh, their thought is, um, I, I really want to be in control. And even down to little small things that you uh, come at me with, I can't stand it when you're too different from me. My response to that is, I see that for what it's worth, but I want to be in relationships that give me room to think for myself. Now, I hope this uh, video gives you some good things to contemplate and to think about, and it uh, kind of gives you an idea of what to watch for when you're dealing with this uh, pattern that we call narcissism. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We'll keep more videos coming your way, and I hope there's a cumulative effect that uh, helps you along the path. In addition, there are times when you're dealing with something like this, and you know, I could use some help in helping me sift this out and figure out how to respond well, and what does this say about me? You know, I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. It's an online therapy resource. It can be so refreshing to have somebody that says, I know you and I care about you, and let's see if we can figure out how you can be your best version of you. So if the need is there, please get the assistance that you would need. Uh, we have the, uh, the link below to the BetterHelp people, and, and uh, they would be very immediately available. In addition, I have courses that I've put together. It's like signing up for an online class and I have uh, uh, the, the, each course is extensive with at least 25 videos and each video has written documentations with guided questions. And, uh, and, and so we have a ready, set, connect about connecting well. This is me uh, finding your boundaries, free to be finding yourself despite the controllers. We also have um, my webinars that have been presented, 90-minute presentations. All of this is on our website, along with my access to my podcast, books, articles, plenty of resources. Okay, when that narcissist comes at you and says, okay, I've got to get you to think a certain kind of way, and they do it over and over, after a while, it's, it's like this is not just enthusiasm about a favorite topic. They're trying to control me, and they're, they're negating my individuality. I see it for what it is. It may not, uh, they, they may deny it, but when it keeps coming, I, I'm on to it. I'm hoping that you can uh, 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 see that so that you can separate yourself off from their schemes, and in doing so, uh, let's hope that it takes you to a place where you're much more steady and caring, and in the end, it allows you to have a much stronger measure of personal peace.